for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins on the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys a full breakdown of my Pittsburgh Steelers offensive ebook that I just put out. I know it's late in the year and not a lot of people are playing Madden like they do typically when it's football season, but I did do a full breakdown since I've been using the Steelers offense. I did put out a full ebook for them because I know there's a lot of people out there that are still playing. So today, I'm going to give you guys a full free breakdown of this. Even though the ebook's only been out for a couple of weeks, I did want to bring this as my full free video that I try to put out every single month here on YouTube. As always, if you guys don't know I try to put out a full breakdown of an offense or defense every single uh, month for the people that don't purchase the extra content like my join now community tab uh, my patreon subscriptions or my ebooks that you can get on my website and in the description but the purpose of these videos is really meant to show you guys what you would get if you decide to pick up any of these extra things so as always there will still be more plays and more hidden features in the ebooks and in these uh, extra add-on sites but this gives you pretty much everything you need to know and this will probably be the first offense that I use in Madden 24 comes out. So if you're watching this, you might get a head start on next year. Other than that, let me know in the comments section what video or what uh, offense or defense you'd like to see me guys break down in next month's video. And other than that, let's go and get right into the video. Now, one of the most important things about this particular playbook is a lot of the plays I'm going to show you and some of the best plays I'm going to show you are out of the NFL live playbook. So before you pick this playbook, make sure you set this to on and it will change quite a bit some of the plays available in the playbook. So make sure you do that. Next up, we have the counter Y. It's just a good run play. Uh, most people will expect inside zones, but this run play going in the opposite direction should throw your opponent's user off quite a bit. And it's a pretty effective run. I mean, here we have, uh, you know, the pulling blocking just works out really well. It's a good five to 10 yard run every single time. And it's something that's just good to have uh, when most people try to shoot gaps for inside zones. That would look like a run commit or something. But when most people try to shoot gaps for the inside zone, you can really just take it the other way. You can see the blocking is pretty successful and, and it's pretty consistent. Next up, we have the deep corner. This is a, we'll start off with temp two. All you gotta do is put the B route on a streak and the RB route is a really good uh, cover two play. At least that's one option. You could also streak the RB route. Just make sure you run this from a hash mark to the open side of the field. Put the X route and the 10 yard out route one more time. And the B route here kind of comes off in like a little bit of a delay, but he could still get inside the cover two safety for a big play, including one play touchdown if you time it correctly. We'll go ahead and we'll pick that play again. This time we'll pick Tampa 2, cover 2 man I mean. The RB route is a really good man beating route. That's really the only thing I wanted to show. It doesn't really matter what the man coverage is. The RB route is going to be one of the better man beating routes in the game. Next up we have the verticals. Start off with cover 2. Against cover 2 just put the RB route on a streak. And then motion out the B route. You can put the A route on an out route, or you can put the X route a drag. I mean, I put him on an out route and then put the X route on a slant for a check down. But at the end of the day, I mean, I'm really just trying to, to isolate this wheel route outside here for a big catch and run. The tight end was open over the middle, too. They both get open against cover two. Well, that's not even a tight end. It's Quez Watkins now, so even better. But the A route's a pretty good check down. As you can see, he's open underneath. I mean, I could take that. I mean, it's, it's, everything's open here. You know, I mean, cover two's not a very good defense right now in Madden 22, but it's really easy to attack outside like this. Let's go ahead and let's hit the, uh, the Quez route real quick because it is there. As long as I can body that, you can see right there. I mean, it's, it's not as open as the outside routes are, though. Has a similar effect against cover two, man. I'll do the exact same setup and you'll see he just runs around the potential jam although the um, the tight end was open too again I mean I was watching the tight end when I threw that ball but you can see everybody's open the same way against cover three it's not as good but if you motion this out a lot of times the uh, the a route will just get open right up the seam that's probably the best thing you can get out of cover three out of this right now. You can put the X route here on a comeback once again and put the uh, the A route on a streak and the B route on a drag, similar to another play that I put out. And the RB route should get open across the field again, although I don't know why I didn't catch that. I guess it was just a bad throw. I mean, I was saying good accuracy. We'll do that again. 
and we'll get uh, we'll get that playoff at some point. Why is he not catching this? Well, you can see it's gone. We'll do it one more time just because if it lets me let's go do this one more time like i said that that rb route is just streaking i don't know why i didn't catch any of those next up we're gonna do cover four exact same setup should be the exact same results although this takes a little bit longer because you gotta wait for this guy to pass. It's to the point too when I get that pass lead that I might not actually be able to catch it in bounds. But we'll do that again. So just wait till he crosses that safety and then boom, there we go. That'll be it. If he catches it, yeah, there we go. So we got easy one play touchdown against Cover 4 regular as well. Next up we have the Z spot. It's another play that can work against just about any zone coverage. The B route here, I'd put on like a slanting check down. But at the end of the day, if it's a zone coverage, I'm reading the A route first. If it's there, I'll take it. If it's not there, typically the B route will be open above it. I'm sorry, the RB route since I'm on this side. But ultimately, it's going to be the same thing. Here we got a man coverage. Like I said, I wait for that RB route to get open. And it looked like he had position, but we still got that over the top. So man or zone, that route should get open against just about anything except for cover four. Next up, we got the four verticals. Start off with cover two. Put the A route on a drag and the Y route, and really the every route, to be honest with you, beats cover two here. As you can see, the X route here is going to get open to the outside. You can have that same look on the other side with the other route, as long as you're running it from the middle of the field. Um, but the Y route also is going to be a big play against cover two. As you'll see here, you can just basically split the middle of the field, and we get a very big play that way. As cover two is not a very good defense if you spread the defense apart like this particular formation does. Next up, we have the at-back slip screen. Pick random again. This play is all about the slip screen, but the A route can get open quickly enough that you can throw it if you have a quarterback who can throw off his back foot, which Jalen Hurts cannot. So if you have somebody who's a little bit more of an accurate thrower, that'll work out. But otherwise, you pretty much just call this play to catch your opponent with his pants down and hit him with a screen play, which is a very good play because a lot of the routes that are being run from this formation will get your opponent's attention and draw it away from the running back. Next up, we got the inside zone. It's just your bread and butter run play. It's going to be a very consistent, successful inside run, especially because this defense really spreads apart the uh, your opponents because of the wide receivers basically being the whole length of the field. It's going to be it's going to give you a lot of opportunity for big runs. This is very good, uh, you know, dink and dunk formation with a very good um, spread for run plays. Next up, we got the Y sale. The B route doesn't beat anything, but the three receivers aside of him all beat man. The running back beats zone. The A route can beat zone also, as you can see right here, they drop down hard flat onto the onto the running back. Gotta take the tight end. You could flip the play or flip the field. You could cut the field in half pre-snap, making this much easier. Like right here, it looks like we have a cover for quarters, or maybe it's a man zero blitz. And then like I said, this guy here is gonna beat anything man or zone pretty quickly. It's a very good route. If it's a zone coverage, flip the field in half to the running back in the A route side. The A route here obviously beats that man zero blitz very quickly. And I probably could have been gone for much more if I didn't run out of bounds. But you also always have the Y route. So if your opponent is running man coverage and starts using that side, you can always go to this side as well and have a very big play as that looked like it was another man coverage. The X route can beat man coverage as well, although it takes the longest out of all three of the routes. So that should really be your last read. Next up we have the corner strike against cover three the corner strike uh, if you just streak the wire out here will get open outside very easily it's a very similar formation uh, effect it's a formations effect not necessarily anything else as you can see I mean it just doesn't cover that very well and I'm not really I don't know, I'm not getting the best throws it's almost pulling me out of bounds but you can see we can have that effect over and over also has that effect against cover four As once, I, once again, like I said, it's a formational effect. So it's going to have it against, you know, it's the formation that's doing it, not the route. So it's the same thing as the previous play.
Also has success against man. Same setup. And he's just whiffing. Same setup. Put him on a streak. And the X route is just he just gets cut off trying to trying to jam. As you can see, he just beats that. So very good play against pretty much any man or zone. That includes cover two. We're gonna pick cover two sink. This one here is gonna do a little bit better. But still not good enough, as you can see. I mean that was just a bad throw. Cover two zone is going to do a little bit better, but it's still not going to do good enough because it still angles to the weak area of the field. You got a safe catch if I'm not, if you're not getting lower throws like I'm not. A little bit better accuracy or better quarterback would work very well. Then there's man coverage. Cover one robber. It's going to show it has the. Against man coverage. You have just as equal a chance as the Y route to be the play. Once again, because everybody's kind of getting jostled around. So this is one of the few times where this is going to change who gets the ball. I'm going to put the A route and the Y route on streaks or fades. It doesn't really matter. Here we have a fade. And you can see, I mean, I just throw it up there. And he's getting past that. So, I mean, I, that was a fade. I think a streak probably does better. So we're streaking and fading both outside, both slot receivers. But you can see the, the jostling is really what gets that to happen. And then we have a very easy one play touchdown opportunity, although he had to stop to catch the ball again because Jalen Hurts is that much of an arm. Next up, we have the curl combo. We'll go ahead and pick the Overstorm Brave. This play here, anytime your opponent presses, which is really popular, especially when it comes to like the Overstorm Brave. Anytime your opponent presses, all you have to do is put this X route here on a fade, or sometimes a streak. I'll go on and block my running back. Sometimes a, a streak is the way to go, but you're going to see how this fade will a lot of times get him over the top. As you can see, there he's wide open, but the pressure is going to force Jalen Hurts to throw some inaccurate balls because he doesn't do uh, too good a job with that. So I'm going to do that one more time. Like I said, we'll just bring the user down, kind of recreate what most people do. But anytime somebody presses, just go to this play, put the X route on a fade, and he will get around, like right there. He just runs right through it. And the reason for that is simple. is because the way that this play set up, there's a, a pressing mechanic um, that uh, kind of works against it. I'll go to the replay. Basically, the reason this play works is because the guy getting pressed, the guy at the front of the line, is not the guy that's supposed to be covered by this guy. You know what I mean? He presses, but he's supposed to be covering 16. You see, once the, once the play starts, seven presses six, but he's supposed to be covering 16. So once the play starts, he gets off the press. Now he's trying to cover, and it's way too late. So that's why this play works. Um, the comeback route can work, too, as you can see right here. I mean, they're still switching. As seven's chasing, it then becomes 20's guy, and it's just a, a whole confusion that gets him wide open. But this underneath route can get open as well. I'll block my running back this time and show you what happens if they don't press. The Y route will get open. If it's not done correctly, you can see the Y route's right there for the comeback. So both of those routes beat man coverage. It really just depends on what you're looking at. We'll go and bring our user down here once again, which is, you know, being controlled by nobody. Just to show you one more time how easily this play uh, can get gone. As you can see, it's just a lot of jostling. And then this guy's just wide open streaking down the field for an instant touchdown. Now, I have had success with this play against uh, cover three in press as well. So let's go and let's pick cover three. If somebody makes the mistake of pressing in any defense, really, it has a similar effect. So we'll go and we'll do that one more time. You can see how the, y, the X route gets over the top once again, although it's much less convincing, but we can still get a one-play touchdown. So any defense in press just should have success. Next up, we got the drive H wheel. Start off with man zero blitz, the Overstone Brave. But this play here, all you got to do is streak the X route. And you'll notice how the, the, the Y route gets in the way of the receiver or of the uh, defender covering uh, the streaking receiver. We'll go, we'll go to the replay just so we can watch what happened there. But, uh, but yeah, he basically just, you know, sets a pick. And that's going to get this guy open, which will happen uh, more often than not. So very easy one play touchdown against man zero. Next up out of the stack wide flex, we have the drive H wheel. Here we go. Here we go. 
Easy play against cover two. Just streak the X route. Y route's going to get open outside of it. That's going to be the same against pretty much any man or zone, to be honest. Against cover three, do the same setup. But if you motion this guy out, he'll steal yards in the flats. Keep it to the short side. That's a really good route to cover three. You don't have to motion him out to have that effect either. But if you streak that X route once again against cover three, the Y route here is just wide open again. Just like cover two. Like I said, any zone coverage is going to do that for the most part. Will have a good effect against cover four, though. As you can see, beats that outside as well. It just really follows. Everything's following that streak. They're too tight. They're too close together. And then cover four drop. It's going to get dropped the same way. Haha, -ha, because it's the same route, the same defense. I don't know. I didn't catch it. But you see it gets open. I'll do it again. So I'm just bullet and pass leading the second that that cornerback chases the streak. It's really that simple. And it'll do the same against any man coverage. We'll do cover two man. Just because, but it's going to work the same way. Cover two man is probably the best man coverage to cover this round. It still doesn't cover it. So coverage just beats about any defense. Any defense in the game. When it comes to the drive H wheel running back, you can really throw a quick out to the running back and get a very big play. Even if the, they're man aligned, which on that particular play they weren't, you could still have a lot of success in the flat with this because it gets open instantly. The, the, it only gets covered if it turns up field. The man coverage will eventually catch up, but if you do it like this, it will get open instantly. You also have the X route out here, which can get open as well, although that one is a little less um, obvious. And it's not necessarily a guarantee, as you can see, the cornerback here. You really have to wait for him to get outside the cornerback. The speed out route can be a very good route against man. But like I said, it's a little bit iffy. It really depends on who he's going against. And then obviously the running back works every single time. Like I said, right there. Sometimes if he doesn't bite, he can break on that and be a problem. So to me, the best route on this play is easily the running back to take against man coverage. Because you can see, I mean, even, like I said, even if he's man line, I do it a million times online. He does not get covered if you throw it instantly. You have to throw it right away, almost like you're pitching it out. And not look, before, he, before he crosses the line of scrimmage, to be honest with you. You can see right here, you get some really big plays, especially if the user forgets to cover the running back, which a lot of people do. Next up, we got the fade out. Start off with uh, Tampa 2. I'll move this ball to the open side of the field here. This play here, if you don't want to make any motions with the running back, you can just put the X route on a streak, and you will have an opportunity to the Y route, although it's not going to be as big an opportunity if you motion out the running back. As you can see, I can make that play. But if I motion in the running back, if I put him on a streak, motion him over twice, motion him to the left, and then motion him to the line, you'll notice that it changes how the cornerback reacts. I also find it's best to put the X route here on just a five-yard out route, and that, that cornerback will drop down a lot quicker giving you a much bigger catch and run opportunity outside of there went out of bounds a little bit but this is very easily capable of a one play touchdown i don't think you even have to to change the x route to be honest i just feel like that's probably the better way to go but you can see here i can pass lead inside a little bit more maybe if i had quez watkins running that that might have been a touchdown but uh, but there's definitely um, more opportunity if you run the play this way. I'm pretty sure I could probably throw to the RB route too, but I'd much rather throw outside. I said I could probably get it right over the middle there to the running back as long as they don't have a deep middle safety, which a lot of people will make that adjustment. Also has success against cover three. So we'll go ahead and we'll pick fade out again, cover three. Against cover three though, we're just gonna put him on a, um, on a comeback route. That's all you gotta do. Run from a hash mark once again because once he gets to this point, you have to bullet and pass lead outside. And that's also very capable of a one play touchdown. I'll go to the replay to show you what to look for. Because you're really just watching for the cornerback to, re to react to this route, which he's just basically pulling him inside. I mean, you can see the, the receiver doesn't really, really get past him, he just gets outside of him. And then you can bullet and pass lead away to get that separation.
And this is going to work against cover three or cover four because the deep zone drops react the same way. So we'll go ahead and we'll pick cover four drop. Against cover four, you might want to smart route the X route just to get that cornerback to react a little bit lower. But you can see it still works the same way. It still gets over the top. It's just a, probably a little bit of a tighter window because you do have more deep cover safeties. Also has success against cover four match. So we're going to pick cover four quarters. Same setup, you can see it still reacts similarly, and you can still drop it in the in the bucket there. Next up, we'll choose that play again. This time, we'll choose uh, we'll choose some man coverages. We'll start off with the Overstorm Brave. This here, I find putting them on a streak or putting them on a fade um, can have this exact same success as you can see the uh, the receivers cross up the defensive backs once again, which is something that happens in a lot of plays in this formation. Said, I don't you can get this animation from a streak or a fade, but I find a fade probably works best. But you can see that once again they cross and the two defenders just basically just get on top of each other and get in each other's way, and eventually the inside guy gets a free release. So you're not always gonna get that, but you know, keep a lookout for it. Once again, put this uh, running back into a check and release is another good tip here we go you can see they run into each other again by the time that cornerback gets off it's just a wide open easy one play touchdown so any man cover zero should really take uh, you know should take care of that next up we'll pick uh cover two man against cover two man you got a couple different options you can do the trick where you motion the running back over put him on a streak and then put the x route on a zig route and a lot of times you'll get an animation that looks like this where this guy is just wide open in the flat because they kind of bump into each other once again, which is kind of, you know, always the uh, the trick when it comes to this formation. But I'll do that again, just to show you that it's not uh, it's not a fluke. They get each other's way, and you can get a, get a big play that way. You can also do that exact same zig route, put the A route on a streak, motion in the B route, and you'll get um, you'll get an opportunity going the other way. Once again, you're gonna you know you can split the safeties. Probably want a little bit of a faster receiver there doing that, but you get a one play touchdown going that way as well. Could also use that uh, that same concept with cover for quarters. So I'm gonna put the X route on a on a slant. I'm gonna put the running back on a check and release. I'm gonna put the A route on a streak. I'm gonna motion in Brown. And against cover for quarters, as long as we can buy time in the pocket. The B route here will get open over the middle for a potential one-play touchdown. We'll call that a touchdown, but you can see how you can split the safeties the same way. So that gives you really two one-play touchdowns against cover four in this formation. Next up, we have the quick base. Another good run play if your opponent's getting a little too pass-heavy on defense. That's all it really is, but at least this moves the marker. It's going outside more. Where the previous play was more of an inside run, this one here, it's, it's potentially to be more of an outside run. Although the formation I'm, I'm, I'm looking at really seems to be tightening and shifting up and stuff like that. But like I said, it's a good run play. It's also a very close play to it by the slip screen. This A route gets open quick enough that you can make this the read, but at the end of the day, it's all about the screen. And it's a good um, thing to mix in. The zig route also gets open pretty quick if your opponent's running a lot of man. So you can use either one of these plays. Next up, we got the inside zone. Here we go, here we go. If people get too pass heavy, you just hit them with this inside zone. That's really all there is to it. This is a very pass heavy formation, so you're going to have a lot of opportunities where an opponent might really come out in some gap heavy control defense, trying to stop the pass, and then you can just hit them with an inside zone. Typically getting, you know, maybe 5, 10 yards, something like that. See right here, that was a double safety blitz, and we're just blown right past that. So you're definitely going to have opportunities for the inside zone. It's the best run play in the formation. Next up, we have the levels. So I'm just going to block my running back here. And you'll notice that there's a lot of good man-beating concepts, especially when it comes to the Y route. It's essentially a drag, but it doesn't open up like a drag, so the user won't typically be there. Um, but you have a lot of good options here. You really have, like, the A route. The Pretty much every route here beats man. The A route, though, you really have to make sure you have, a, like, a faster tight end than what I have because he's not going to break in front of that cornerback 
quick enough. So that's one of the few routes where I wouldn't suggest necessarily throwing it, but the B route here will get open in the break. Um, the, obviously that's gonna be your second best read because it's not over the middle of the field where the user will typically be. The X route will also get open, but he is over the middle of the field. So he's somebody that I probably wouldn't want to throw that. And you can see he doesn't really break quick enough because the, the, the speed of the pass rush is kind of forcing me to get out quick. So I would say on this play here, you're really gonna wanna throw to the Y route, which takes a little bit longer than the B route to get open, or you can basically just hit this B route Next up, we got the PA read. Gonna start off with nickel Tampa 2. So I'll put the Y route on a fade, put the A route on a curl. That's really all I have to do. I mean, I can block the running back. Uh, but you can see how this guy here is gonna split the safeties. And it's gonna be that way whether it's cover two, man, or zone. But I'll do that again. Like I said, the A route is a good comeback, it is a good option against man coverage. As you can see there, if I hold that ball a little bit longer, we get a nice, uh, you know, easy one play touchdown against cover two. Next up, we'll choose cover four. Go to cover four regular first. This play works best on a short side uh, bomb, which is the um, hash mark to the short side of the field. All you gotta do is fade the Y route, put the A route on a curl again. And the X route here will split those safeties just as long as you bullet and pass lead up once he gets inside the, the free safety. We'll go to the replay to show you guys what to look for. Like I said, once he gets inside of this safety here, he's already past the strong safety. So you can see I'm already loading up. And that's going to be your one play touchdown because this sets up just get enough to get him past that strong safety. Works against cover four match even better. We're going to pick that. Same setup. And we're going to get um, another, you know, this one here, we're going to get even more separation. As you can see, he just, for whatever reason, the, the both the cornerback and the safety chase that fade. Go to replay one more time. This fade route gets all the attention from both guys, leaving this guy just streaking wide open over the middle. I guess they expect the safety to rotate over and pick him up, but there's just nothing but separation here. Next up, we'll do cover two man. Same setup, fade the Y route. That's all you really gotta do. And wow, we're really getting going there. I don't know what happened on the jam. But uh, it's gonna work even with a less impressive jam than what I got, or less impressive release than what I got there. I'm not even gonna go to the replay because you're not gonna see releases like that every time. Um, this here is a little bit more realistic where he's behind still, and we're still getting that one play touchdown very easily. So, you know, same, th same thing as cover two, zero, and pretty much all man coverage is if you watch. I mean, they just, they just get in each other's way, which is typical of this formation, which is why it's so overpowered is that stack formation is the receivers are so close together, the defensive backs just typically get in the way against just about everything. Also works against man zero. Same setup, anytime the routes intersect like this, the way that the, the, they're basically just running on top of each other, you're gonna get this look and you're gonna get separation. Even with the safety turning into a deep safety there, we still get over the top very easily you can keep that safety away just by checking and release the running back one more time as i messed everything up here but we'll do that again i don't know what's going on i'm messing everything up like i said check and release the running back got a good check down with the a route and we got a very easy one play touchdown to this guy once again so pretty much every you know play in this formation is going to have that success Also choose cover one man. Same thing, I'm gonna block the running back, but same thing, fade the Y route. And we're gonna have similar success to the outside. Although you can see, I mean, a little more speed would be nice. This isn't necessarily gonna be as, uh, as simple, but if you get a good, you know, like right here, they get in each other's way, get that pass lead outside. Very easy, won't play touchdown against cover one man, just as long as those cornerbacks bump into each other enough. 
Might be able to get that same success with the, um, I don't know what I did there. <laughs> I'll do that one more time. Let's see if they get in each other's way. time like I said there they're getting each other's way I know I got myself a big play and you know I, I probably could have held that a, a second longer might have been a better thing a better, better way to go we put the a route if you want to get rid of your check down you can always put the a route on the streak you can put the b route on that zig just to try to pull that safety over as much as possible because he's really the only guy that can come in the way once this receiver gets deep Next up, we have the Salem Pivot. It's another really good man zero play. The A route here is probably going to be the best one, although Goddard doesn't appear to be quick enough to really run these routes too well. But you can see he does get open. The B route will get open too, but the Y route is the one that typically will get forgotten. Like the, if you hit that tight end a few times, your opponent's going to start using the tight end, then you can basically just hit the Y route on the other side. So you have two really good man beating routes, uh, and it really just depends on you know how your opponent uses. Like I said, if we're getting Buda Bakers out there covered really well, but usually that's a much wider opening. And like I said, if you hit that tight end first. Your opponent will start paying attention to that with their user. That'll basically just get the Y route open anyway, and then you can just basically run this play all game because you got multiple routes to get open. Next up, we have the Y sale. This play here is really, uh, you know, you split the field in half. I've got to move the ball to the center of the field because there's really good routes on both sides. The zig route's going to be best against man. The, um, the, the, the side that it's typically going to start on, though, is going to be the right side. The running back is going to be a zone beater. The A route is going to be the man beater. It's really going to be that simple. Even here, like, the, like he drops down, I can still take the A route. So the A route's not just a, a, a man beater. But if I have somebody who's running a lot of man, I might just go straight to the zig. Here we got that tight end once again. Like I said, it's a very good route. If the but you're really reading the running back to the tight end, and you can really go to the other side too. Like I said, the zig route. If it's a man coverage like this appears to be, the zig route's typically gonna be good. Although they didn't do a very good job, but trust me, zig routes are great when it comes to man coverage. The check down is definitely going to be the in route as well. As you can see right there, not a very good reaction by number nine. Uh, but when the user leaves the middle of the field, that, that's gonna be a route that typically gets open. Next up, we have the Z spot. It's another man zero play. This play right here, if you block the running back, the Y route really gets open real quick because the way the programming is in the game, they think that, I mean, they basically play it to the outside like they're waiting for him to turn outside. So if you throw it and pass lead inside, before he does that, you can see he can just get open right over the top and have a very easy one play touchdown against man coverage. Basically instantly open against pretty much any man coverage. Also works against cover one. It's the exact same setup, exact same play. The safety, though, can be over the top and give you a little bit of an issue, but that's about it. Still a very good play against cover one. Like I said, you're really just using the programming against itself as you bullet and pass lead inside. Like I said, you can get one play touchdown if I can make this guy miss. That's the only thing, but otherwise, it's a very good play. We'll go and move on to another dink and dunk play because that's really what this offense is all about. A lot of really good dink and dunk plays. I'll go ahead and I'll switch to the bench next because this is a play that really works good against any defense. So we'll go random 2 4 once again. This play here, I mean, you can run it like a simple bench concept and have a lot of success. The wire out here is really going to be what gets opening. It's just about any single defense, and you can really run it the same way every single time. I find it's best just to put the X route on a streak and the B route on a streak, too, because the tight end will get open a lot. Although sometimes you could put the B route on a drag and give yourself a check down. You can leave them on that out route as well, uh, but you really want to try to highlight the Y route because that route's going to get open against just about anything. This here looks like a man coverage. You can see he's beating to the outside. He's going to be zone coverage coverages to the outside as well and he's going to have a lot more success if you use the hash mark glitch which means running it from a hash mark to the short side of the field so if it's run this way against any zone coverage that wide route's going to get open and even if it's a man coverage because like i said i've been showing that he's been being that too that would like a cover four i don't have a really very accurate quarterback which is why i overthrow it but you can see when you run it from a hash mark to the open side of the field next to the streaking receiver like this it's going to get open outside of that every single time you just need a better quarterback than what i have although we'll call that a completion but at the end of the day this is something that you can use over and over and then like i said if you really want that check down i find it's best to have that b route coming underneath just for a quick check down just in case you don't have time or you don't want to wait for that develop, that route to develop that's another play that can be a one play touchdown against cover two so we'll go ahead and we'll pick that 
and we'll pick cover two zone. We'll get, it'll also be cover two man, but we'll start with cover two zone. Obviously, this play, you're going to want to run from a hash mark to the open side of the field, and it's going to be the exact same setup. This is a perfect setup for cover two. As you'll see, the wire out here will get open up the field. As long as I get a good pass lead or maybe a good catch and run, it can be, it's going to be an explosive play, but it can be a one-play touchdown uh, just as long as I get a little bit of a better uh, you know, series of events there. As you can see here, once again, like I said, it's really all about getting past the safety, which, like I said, might not be able to do with this particular offense. This is not really that good. I'll start off with one that takes zero adjustments, and that's the cross wheel. So this play here is really all about the double drags. Very good dink and dunk concept. I know a lot of people like to throw to the running back in a concept like this, and I can do that from time to time. Again, zone coverage, he gets open underneath, but against uh, man coverage, he can get open deep, and we'll really see what we got here. Like I said, I'm not big on throwing to the running back out of this. That's why if I try to force it, I'll probably make a mistake. I have a better play for throwing to the running back anyway, if it's something that you like to do. Like I said, it looks like here, you might have that cover zero or that cover one look. Like I said, it's, it's an option. If you have a fast running back, you can throw deep against cover zero or cover one. But at the end of the day, if I choose this play, I'm really just working the crossers. And from time to time, I might go to the deeper crosser, which is the, um, the B route going over the middle. Because there really only is one run play that I use in this entire offense, but it's really good. As you can see, I average almost nine yards of carry. So it's going to let's pick the halfback quick base to start, but I found a couple of ways to make this play really good. You don't have to make any adjustments. You can run this just like this, and you can see there's definitely holes to be found. But I find that if you motion across this tight end, which may be not the best idea here, if it's a man coverage, it might pull somebody across, but you can see actually there, it actually opened up some space because the linebacker is safety in that area did have to go out wide but if you motion them across it really turns into like what looks like a single back bunch te which gives you a a lot of extra blocking in this area because typically this lineman i know the steelers don't have great offensive line uh so they might not blow up in the most holes but typically if you make this motion across you'll see how you just blow open a lot more holes because now you have an additional especially against zone coverage against man coverage it might pull somebody across so not so much but against zone coverage it gives you a blocking advantage and because you have now three tight three receivers blocking on that side and you're gonna have one of these guards pull across that'll typically get you uh, some good space as well now there like I said Steelers offensive line is pretty terrible one of the worst in the game but without a doubt this is an amazing run play I also want to show Now this play here, you don't really need to make any adjustments. You can run it as is, and it's a pretty good run play. I find myself, it might be issues. Now this play can be a little bit hit or miss. Uh, you don't have to make any adjustments either. You can run this just like this, but I find it's best if you make this motion across. A lot of times it's going to, especially against zone coverage, give you a blocking advantage like right here. I mean, they look like they're in a double safety blitz of some kind, so I might not get the run that I'm expecting. But you have three guys in this area now instead of just two, and the guard's going to come across to seal as well. Now, a lot of times I'll find it's best just to take it outside. If it gets too jumbled in there, you can just take it wide and treat it like a sweep run, and it's still going to be very successful. You could also just run this right up the middle, but one of the last things you can do, especially if you have a man coverage and a defender follows across, which he did not do here, is you can cut it back. But since nobody follows into the zone, my pre-snap read is going to be to take it inside. Like I said somebody did cut me off there. The Steelers line is really not that great. And this play can be a bit spotty from time to time, a little bit hit or miss. I find that when you want to set this guy into motion too, when you want to motion his tight end, just make sure to, to hit the B button and down so you make sure you get on your running back first and not actually on alignment because this this is a dead giveaway that's a run play if a lineman's name shows up. So I always make sure that I go to the running back first, then to the receiver, then to the tight end so that I don't give away what I'm doing before I make that motion. And then, like I said, you'll see a lot of times if it's not there right away, there was actually an opportunity for me to cut it back, but I was slow to react. I really want to show you guys how there's more than one way to run this play. You can run it right up the middle, you can run it to the left, or you can run it to the right uh, just as long as you get that cutback lane. But you can see right there, it's a very thin line of defense, not a lot of guys along the board. You're going to get an easy run right up the gut there i am going to look for an opportunity to cut this run back though because like i said in my gameplay videos that i showed a lot of times if it's not there in the hole that i'm going it's just a simple you know cut back to take it the other way to, you can have a lot of success but at the end of the day i'm not having a ton of success with the Steelers against this look because, like I said, the Ravens really do have a good line. This year, they're really in tight. I can tell the Ravens probably going to want to take this outside. Like I said, a lot of times, you're just going to hit that gas and just take it out wide. If there's too much packed in there, you can treat this like a stretch run or you can treat it like a counter run where you really just go back towards the, uh, the tight end side. I mean, there's so many different ways to use this run play. 
So now that we went over all of our dink and dunk plays, let's hit some one-play touchdowns. We'll start off with the best one in the whole thing, which is going to be the shot fade cross, which is going to be one-play touchdown against just about everything. We're going to pick that. We'll start off with cover two and work our way back. Once again, you want to run this from a hash mark to the open side of the field because you're going to want the extra catch and run space. But this is definitely the best one play touchdown in the entire formation. Just put the Y route on the streak. That's all you really got to do. I like to put the A route on a drag a lot of times, give myself a high-low check down between the crossing routes. But you really don't have to worry about that because this route here is just so explosive and so easily going. It just runs to space and it's going to cook any cover two, man or zone, which I'll show you here in a second. I'm going to run all these plays once because you really only have to see it once. But moving on to cover two zone or cover two man rather, exact same setup, giving myself a dragging check down if I need it. The the X or the or Y route really is gone too, but you can see how Austin, once again, just runs right around the jam. It's based off of the formation. He's in too tight. Typically, cornerbacks or receivers that are in tight like this don't get jammed. You can see the cornerback, he just, if I motion him out, he'll get, you know, the cornerback will come down to press. But in tight like this, they really don't press. So that's why he'll just run right past it. He'll still try to press, but you'll see he'll just run right past it a lot of times as he gives him a free release. It's not designed to really be run that way, which is why it's such an easy play. So even if they press automatically, he's still going to get around that and be a one-play touchdown, trust me. So moving on, we'll go out, we'll do some uh, cover three zone. Cover three zone's a little bit different. I have a better one-play touchdown versus cover three zone, which I'll show in a minute. But cover three zone is a play that you can run from a hash mark to the short side of the field and still be very glitchy. So put the wire out on a streak, do my check downs again, and you'll notice how the streak, once again, pulls the cornerback inside, letting this guy go outside. Now, like I said, it's it's in a, one play touchdown capable, but based off of the fact that I'm on the short side of the field, it really makes that window a lot tighter. But the second he turns there, I can try to get outside, and if I have enough speed, I could probably be going for one play touchdown with this against cover three, maybe at a little bit of a shorter distance, or you know, if I had a little bit of a faster guy. But once again, very glitchy. We'll go ahead, we'll pick cover one man because that's a similar to cover three look and it has very similar results. So we'll go ahead and pick cover one hole. Now for this play, you probably can just continue with the Y route on a streak, but these underneath routes all beat man coverage too. So it really doesn't make sense to lose the check downs. So I'd say it'd make more sense to put the tight end on a streak just to pull that safety back. And it'll also pull him back in the area away from where I really want to go, which is the X route. As you can see, he really has a tendency to get past Marlon Humphrey, but Marlon Humphrey's got an X factor, I think where he knocks out contested catches. But uh, once he runs, if you watch the X route, once he runs into the cornerback, he's officially gone. And then at that point, you just have to get like a, you know, a safe catch or something. Like I said, you can see Marlon, Marlon Humphrey's X factors lighting up as he's knocking these balls out. Uh, but at the end of the day, this route does get passed every single time. And it, because, it comes from this. When he bumps into him, you can see he's instantly passed him. So at this point, you basically just lob it up. And you can see I'm already winding up to throw it. Like I said, if he has a step, it's really there. It's just Marlon Humphrey's the cheat code. And that's why he's knocking it out. I said, if I wanted to, if I switch this and run to the other side with a different receiver, you'll see it'll happen the exact same way. Let's go ahead and let's flip this. Now we got Marlon Humphrey nowhere near that, and watch how Pickens is going to do the exact same thing. Although I really didn't want it to be this way, I didn't want it to be this way. You can see he's getting past the exact same way, and he's actually hanging on to it. So not my fastest guy, which is why he's not scoring. But you can see he gets past every single time. It's very consistent. It's just Marlon Humphrey's X factor stopping it. We're going to do that again, this time against man zero because it works the exact same way. And now we're going to see the exact same results. Got a lot of check downs, so I don't have to make any adjustments. But you can see how, you know, he's getting past him again. I don't know if we'll hang on to it or if the X factor will light up and take it away. But you can see it's the same starting depth that the uh, cover zero does as cover one. They're, they start about eight yards off and it gets open the exact same way. So no matter what particular man coverage, this play can score against it. Now, my favorite dink and dunk play is probably the Z spot, and this is because the running back gets into the action a little bit more, and it really has a lot of the same concepts as the first two plays combined. Now, this play here, I'm going to put the, a, uh, the B route on a streak every single time, and I'm going to put the Y route on a drag. Doing this will get just about every single route open except for the B route. Now, the A route is going to be a good route if you have a good tight end, as you can see right there. Good enough to get open, not quite fast enough to beat the safety, but you can see that it's a route that's going to beat man coverage most of the time, and if you run it from the half 
pass mark to the short side of the field, it'll actually beat uh, zone coverage quite a bit too for the same reason I explained on the last play. So we're going to do it from the short side. Like I said, this will just help to get that A route open a little bit more. As you can see, it's a very good route. It's a very, um, you know, good route when it comes to beating man on its own. And it's also a very good zone concept as it got open there. Now the running back is going to be better from the hash mark to the open side of the field is that's really the reason I would run this play the most is because if somebody's running a lot of man zero where they're not covering the running back properly or they're running a lot of zone coverages you could basically take that running back underneath like the entire game and have a lot of successful catch and runs but it's going to be less successful from the hash mark to the short side of the field because you really want to you know use up the space so I'm really going to move this ball back across so that I can highlight the running back a little bit more if for whatever reason your opponent jumps down on that you always have the drag which you can see right there it looks like it might have been a hard flat defender and it takes away that short quick throw to the um, to the running back but it doesn't take it away from the Y route which is really the backup plan and then you also have this guy coming open over the middle who once again if you have your user kind of stuck between the two depths between the zero yard depth of the, of the drag or the 10 yard depth more like a 15 yard depth really of that in route, you're really gonna have a good high-low concept, and you really have that all over the field. You have that with the running back, which you can see right there. He was covered, but because of the fact that he runs it out wide to the open space, he's gonna get open anyway. So I really have these uh, you know, options high-low on both sides of the field, and it really depends on where uh, the defender goes. Now that there, that would have worked if I was on the hash mark to the short side of the field. So you really gotta be aware of where you are on the field. That was a cover three. From here to the open side of the field, the cover three cornerback deep will cover that, but from the short side, he'll cover the streak. So once again, gotta be aware of where you are. That's a man coverage, like I said. Pretty much any tight end should consistently beat man coverage with that tight end route. And even if he doesn't, you have some really good routes on the other side. The running back won't be won't meet man coverage, but the X route and the Y route both will be man coverage as well as the A route. Except we have the dagger. This play here, all I got to do is put the A route on a streak, put the Y route on a drag, can motion across uh, Smith here and put him on a slant. And the running back's actually fine. I can leave him doing what he's doing. The, the drag gets open to 5-0, to zero. the crossing route gets open to 20-25, to 25, and the X route slant gets open about 10-15. to 15. So I pretty much have anything regardless of how my zone drop opponents like to set zone drops. Uh, the running back is a really good check down too. The check and release, not a lot of people really check that. The running back's a really good route, but there's a lot of good routes in this play. So it looks like we have a man coverage because we have somebody following here. That's going to really, I mean, all these routes beat man and zone. That's part of the, the really good part about it, except for the running back. That's one time where you're not going to see the running back work. There, though, I tried to catch and run in quite work out almost i mean i caught the ball still though which is the most important part but like i said everything here beats uh man and zone so i really don't have any concerns i'm just going to work my way from front to back running back to drag to crosser and if that's not there i have that slant option as a uh, as pretty much like an emergency option so there we go once again crossing route will be open although i got a bad throw you can see he was beating his coverage drag route was open too it probably could have took that a lot easier but i was going for the bigger play but this is a very good play against any type of defense and that is the shock h option out of the gun tray open this play once again is available in all the playbooks shown on screen. I'm going to once again start off with cover one before showing all the coverages that this play can beat. The route I'm going to focus on is going to be the wheel route, which doesn't beat anything by itself, but can beat multiple coverages with a few adjustments. The first thing you can do is put it on a simple smart route, which will stretch it out and give you enough separation for a big play, mostly due to the same bump boost I went over in the previous play, but you get much more separation in different ways. The best way is to make sure that you are on a hash mark to the open side of the field and motion across the tight end, as you will see it also brings in the X receiver, making it much closer and opening up a lot of different options for this play. As far as how to get the wheel route open better, all you have to do is put the X route on either a curl or a slant, and both will act to disrupt the cornerback in coverage of the fade route once again as either the curl route receiver or the cornerback covering him will completely get in the way of the defensive back, allowing the receiver to get wide open once again. Against cover zero, you have the option of blocking both the running back for more pass protection, as well as using the same motion snap trick to turn the tight end into a blocker as well. This play can also have a lot of success against cover two man, as the same motion can alter the cornerback's starting depth by making him back off just enough that the cornerback covering the same wheel route will badly miss the jam just about every single time, meaning the receiver will get wide open instantly outside. The best adjustment to make is put the X route on a fade to pull back the safety, and the wheel route will once again get open against cover two man or zone for a big catch and run outside. Next up, out of the tray wide flex, we have the inside zone. 
just the best run play in the formation. Once again, I mean, you're going to get a lot of opportunities, whether it's man or zone. The receiver typically takes out the linebacker. If the, like right here, he's spread out wide because he's probably a man coverage over that guy. That basically gives me a lane. If he's in the lane, a lot of times the receiver will come in and take him out of the play. Right here, though, this is not really the best look because there's probably not anybody that's going to really pick up on that. That would not be a good look. But it's really a one-on-one. -on -one. You really just want to make sure that wherever that linebacker is, that that receiver has has a clear path to him. That's really what's going to create your running space. So here you see he's out over the receiver. That'll give me an option, and I, uh, you know, just a nice big hole. And if he's in the hole, a lot of times the receiver will come out and basically take him out of the play. Next up, we have the PA crossers. So this player here, I want to do is motion this guy out, put him on a. 10 yard out route, put the B route here on a fade. That's all I really gotta do. Cancel the play action. The Y route is going to be the play. Just can't let him get too far across the field. You can see he's going for a one play touchdown. That was actually a little bit too far, but once he gets to the center, I pretty much bullet and pass lead up. Also has success against cover two man. I don't really think you have to put the put Goddard on a speed. Or you could probably leave him on the speed out because it's about the same 10 yard route. But we gotta put him out, move motion him out there. You see here, the, the B route gets open right over the middle once again. Might not be a one-play touchdown against cover two man, but it's definitely going to be a big play. Then against cover three, against cover three, got to make that motion, but you got to put him on a comeback route. Then you put the B route on, on a, not a, a streak or a fade. It doesn't really matter. But the Y route, once again, will be the read once he gets across the safety there. And you can see I don't get a good throw, but he definitely has his space. Against cover three, you got to make that same motion, but you got to put him on a comeback route or, a, you know, whatever. Then put the B route on a fade, and you should have a very good cover three one play touchdown. Once the, the this route here gets across, once again, the Y route, you can see he was very wide open as the cover three cornerback is covering the actual uh, comeback route. Same setup works against cover four. We'll go ahead and we'll pick cover four. And it's going to work the same way. Typically, cover four, you have to run it from a hash mark to the short side of the field. But we'll go ahead and we'll try this one time. It's just so it doesn't take as long to cross the field. But you can see it still worked from this side. But from the hash mark to the short side of the field, it might work even better. Next up, we got man cover one. This year, just put the B route on a fade. That's all you really got to do. The Y route's going to get open uh, for an easy one play touchdown. You could put the tight end on a drag or any number of things. But you can see this is a very easy one play touchdown against cover one as well. Next up, we have the RPO alert screen. The A route's a man beater. For cover three, you really just want to throw it over here. You got good blocking. You'll get a good catch and run. Just have your fastest receiver in that spot if you're going to run this. If you have a lot of holes in the middle of the field, though, just hand it off. I mean, if you have a lane, it's best to just take that lane. But cover three or cover four, you want to throw it to the X route. The next best run play is definitely the counter. There's not a lot of counter plays when it comes to um, you know shotgun runs. They're always very successful when you find them, but it's typically very rare to find shotgun plays. So we'll go and pick that again. Uh, but this is this is it. I mean, you can see how you know everybody's on the left side because that's where the wide receivers are. So switching over to a counter run can be very advantageous. Is that? Particularly defender bust right in and just like took off. I don't know what happened there. Didn't get a great run anyway, but like I said, this is definitely one of the better runs that you can switch to so that your opponent can't overcommit to the strong side, which is typically what people do when they see shotguns because they, they kind of expect it to always be an inside zone or a draw or maybe even a no one trap is a little bit more common. The first one is very simply the inside zone. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. I'll go ahead and I'll show you guys in random 2-4. All this really is, is, you know, if you have a man coverage like this, you can see the linebacker or whoever is split out wide from his normal spot in the middle there, which just creates a nice open lane for me to run through right here up the gut. So if you have that type of look, it's a very easy read. If it's his own coverage and he stays in the hole like he does here, I could always just take that outside, but you can see it still gets to the second level. I mean, it's a very consistent run. Inside zones are typically the most consistent run plays when it comes to shotgun formations, so I really don't think this takes a lot. Although this here, this looks like it could be a man coverage. I might benefit from just motioning this guy across and taking him out of the play. It's really hard to say, but you can see now I just took a defender away with him. So reading the defense is also very important when it comes to running the ball, just like it does when it comes to passing the ball, which is going to be the PA 
a deep cross. This is going to be a one play touchdown against a lot of defenses too, but it's a very good uh, dink and dunk play. So, so this setup here can work against any man or zone. You can streak the A route, motion across the X route, put them on slant, and then put the Y route on a drag. Now the X route gets open at about 15 yards, the crosser gets open at about 20 to 25, and the drag is open at 5. So no matter what you set your zone drops to, or if you're running man coverage, it really won't matter, as all of these routes are really going to get open at different depths, making it pretty impossible to stop. If somebody follows this guy across, you know it's a man coverage, so motion snap him, and you'll get a little bit more of a you know quicker release. As you can see here, it helps him beat that that man coverage. So that's something you can always do too. But the the motion across will help you uh, read the defense. As you can see, you know if a guy follows like he is here, it's typically going to be a man coverage. Block the running back as well, and this play here, like I said, you have three routes that really beat just about any defense, just as long as you get a little bit more pass pro or a little bit better quarterback throwing the ball. Now this play also has one play touchdown capabilities starting off with cover too. So I'm gonna run, run this from a hash mark to the open side of the field, motion this guy across once again, streak that tight end one more time and then put that wire out on a check down drag once again because that also helps to pull the cornerback down. And you can see how this guy here just gets open outside of the cover too. Won't quite be a one play touchdown, but it can be if you get enough pass pro, which would probably will be difficult for me here uh, considering this, uh, this offense really doesn't have a great um, you know, pass blocking or great offensive line. As you can see here, we, we, we do get it outside of there. Like I said, it is capable of one play touchdown, but it's not even really the best one play touchdown in the playbook or in the formation anyway. Now, it also has a very good cover zero concept, so we'll hit the Overstorm Brave up. Now, this here, I find is a very good cover zero concept, which is basically just putting the X route on a smart route and motioning them across. I'll go ahead and I'll block the running back too, just give myself a little bit more time. But you can see how he does bite on that inside move, and that's a superstar cornerback who gets beat by a rookie, a decent rookie in Pickens, but still. So, very good man zero concept. You could also put this guy here on a smart route and shorten that, but for whatever reason, he typically bites on the inside and gets outside space. Also has success against cover zero. The best way to do this setup to me is just putting the B route on a fade and you'll see how a lot of times he'll really get in the way and leave the Y route just wide open as he kind of glitches out the coverage. Uh, you can motion across that uh, that you know other receiver like I was talking about, but let's go and let's take a look at what happened on the replay here. Running this to the short side of the field like this, I think, is one of the main reasons this happens. As you can see, these guys just kind of, you know, he sets a pick for him. And at this point, he's just, you know, he's just basically holding them back now. But like I said, if you want to, you can motion across Pickens and put him on a, a slant the same way. I just don't find that you're going to have the exact same success. And you can see how this success can be a little bit uh, hit or miss, as you can see right there. He didn't quite set that pick, but he still was open. I mean, it's not like he's not going to be open. The route will get open. It's just sometimes he's going to get open more than others. Like there he was wide open, but Kenny Pickett is so trash. I am so sick of using this team already. Uh, we'll go to the replay because I don't feel like doing this any more than I have to. But you can see the pick did work the same way. It wasn't as dramatic, but he's wide open. The best play though, without a doubt, is gonna be the Steeler dig. Stop messing around, we're gonna start off with cover two and then work our way back. This play here, real simple, all I gotta do, put the put the uh, the B route here on a fade. That's all you have to do. I'll block my running back and you'll see how this Y route, I mean, number one, he just runs right up the middle there and he's gone um, within like a few seconds. He doesn't even get zone chucked. So against cover two, Tampa two, it's gonna be very easy to do. Uh, against Tampa 2, you could also motion him across and use the exact same trick that I showed earlier. If you do this, you're probably going to want um, you know, to put the B route on a streak just to pull safeties back as much as possible. But you can see how this Y route here can get open outside of that, even though we did get jammed a little bit more. And it's still not a one-play touchdown like the previous setup. Works against cover 2 man even better. So against cover two men, same setup, just fade the B route, block the running back if you like, and then buy a little bit of time. And you can see this guy's gonna go right up the middle, splitting those safeties. X Factor can't light up if he's that far away. Against cover three, it's very different. So we're going to pick that. So same setup when it comes to cover three, just this time you have to run it from a hash mark to the open side of the field, or the short side of the field rather. Block your running back, put the B route on a fade, and you're really just gonna have to wait for the Y route to get open as you can see right there was almost impossible but he did get open for an easy one play touchdown as i thought i was sacked i don't know can you pick it finally made a play plays really best against cover fours though as we'll pick cover four quarters next against cover four runs from a hash mark to the short side of the field put the b route on a fade and block your running back and you'll notice how the b route here 
really just gets wide open once the safety reacts to the uh, the crossing route because he's really in conflict with the two different defenders. So we'll go ahead and we'll go to the replay to show what happened there. But he's basically responsible for these two receivers. And the second that the corner route comes into his area first, he basically takes him out of the play and he's hit the bull and pass lead in the opposite direction. Last up, we have regular cover four, which beats it in a completely different way. Hopefully they have that in this particular playbook because I did not check before I came in here. So yeah, cover four drop. So I'm going to put the A or the B route on a fade one more time. Motion out Friar move here and put him on a comeback route for the first time all video but other than that everything else works the exact same as i really just have to wait for this lack of pass rush to take effect because you can see how this guy's going to cross the strong safety eventually and be a one play touchdown like i said it takes a little bit of time but cover fours are the slowest pass rush because they only have three pass rush defenders and you can see that once this guy gets off the jam and gets inside of this safety this is when you can bullet and pass lead and get a very easy one play touchdown the verticals which is really similar to the play i showed earlier when it comes to the pa deep cross but it has one more play to it one more route to it so we'll pick random because i really want to highlight the rb route which is the running back who's really the read i mean i could throw it to the the deep crossing route the same way i did in the previous play but uh this is really all about throwing to the running back this is one of the better uh routes the route that the running back is running although like i said the b route here is a very good play as well if it's a blitz will be wide open next up we have the halfback angle it's a good man beating play pretty much all the routes here beat man except for the streak the A route, the running back, they all beat it pretty quickly too. So if it's a man zero blitz, they should all work. The B route is probably my favorite or the Y route, but that's something you get in any, any adjustment, to be honest, is the zig. So you have a lot of options. The B route's a very good route as well. As you can see there, I mean, he breaks on him and then for some reason he loses acceleration. So that was just kind of weird. But you can see how he beats that route, beats that coverage. I said, I don't know if I have to wait a little bit longer. I try to throw in the break, but then for some reason he loses acceleration. But multiple man beating routes. Really all four routes beat man. Next up, we got the verticals. Go pick cover one. B route beats cover one very easily. Once he makes that second break, just bullet and pass it away. Make sure you get a little bit of a better uh, pass than I just threw. You can block the running back. I don't find it's really necessary, though, because the pass rush doesn't really get home. And I don't know why I'm slightly out throwing my guy, but you can see he is getting separation. So let's block the running back. Maybe I'll be a little bit less worried about getting the ball out on time. As you can see here, we finally get that completion. Like I said, when he makes that second break, he's just wide open against cover one. Next up, we have the halfback counter weak. It's another good run play with no real adjustments. It's a good inside run play, as you see right there. It's not really going to have a lot of success outside. This play is really meant to take advantage of the fact that you have the two tight ends set. And a lot of people will really be shifting or paying attention to that side, giving you a good running opportunity in the opposite direction. Not to mention the fact that the actual counter stance a lot of times, I'm not going to run against this, but the actual counter stance a lot of times where they go in one direction and then cut back will really have the user chasing in the opposite direction towards the tight ends as well. Next up, we got the halfback power O. I'm going to go random 3-4 uh, again. This play here I find is best, especially when you have a gap, uh, which I don't really have here, to flip the play with the right stick and run in the other direction. But if you don't have that gap, if you don't have anything noticeable or any noticeable advantage, it's best just to run it as is and just treat it like a dive play, kind of run it right up the middle. So I'll go ahead and I'll do this a few times until I actually get a defense that's spread to the point where I have a gap advantage. Here we don't have that again. So like I said, I'll just run it like a normal run play or maybe just audible out of it entirely. But anytime you have a gap, I'm just going to go ahead and run it because I don't think I'm going to get it in this formation. But anytime you have a gap, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flip this play with the right stick. You can see even here with the guy coming down. The only real reason I didn't get a better gain there is because my guard really wasn't uh, wasn't moving quick enough. We'll do this again. Even with the double safety blitz uh, coming, you can see how that time, the uh, you know, even if you don't have that advantage, apparently it's best to flip it. I always flip this play in the past. So I find it's best just to flip it every single time. Uh, to me, it's better to have less blockers in the way. And you can see how you can have a lot of success, which that, you know, pulling guard really creates a good run lane every single time. Next up, we have the halfback power G. This is really going to work best against cover three and cover four zones. This play here doesn't really require any adjustments. It's just a good, uh, kind of like a stretch replacement. And a lot of times, since the cornerbacks in cover three and cover four drop back, you'll get a good opportunity to the outside. You can always motion out this tight end as well. And a lot of times, the cornerback will drop back, giving you even more space. Because at the end of the day, that's the guy that you're really trying to attack anyway. You can see here he's much further back. And it just gives you more opportunity to get to the edge before he has an opportunity to come up and make a play. Next up, we got the halfback power O. 
I'm gonna go random uh, three, four again. This play here I find is best, especially when you have a gap, uh, which I don't really have here, to flip the play with the right stick and run in the other direction. But if you don't have that gap, if you don't have anything noticeable or any noticeable advantage, it's best just to run it as is and just treat it like a dive play, kind of run it right up the middle. So I'll go ahead and I'll do this a few times until I actually get a defense that's spread to the point where I have a gap advantage. Here we don't have that again. So like I said, I'll just run it like a normal run play or maybe just audible out of it entirely. But anytime you have a gap, I'm just going to go ahead and run it because I don't think I'm going to get it in this formation. But anytime you have a gap, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flip this play with the right stick. You can see even here with the guy coming down. The only real reason I didn't get a better gain there is because my guard really wasn't uh, wasn't moving quick enough. We'll do this once again. Even with the double safety blitz uh, coming, you can see how that time, the uh, you know, even if you don't have that advantage, apparently it's best to flip it. I always flip this play in the past. So I find it's best just to flip it every single time. Uh, to me, it's better to have less blockers in the way. And you can see how you can have a lot of success, which that, you know, pulling guard really creates a good run lane every single time. Like, this might be the only scenario where it's best to run the opposite direction, although I still feel like, you know, you have to have a serious advantage to do that. If your opponent is spreading or shifting in the direction of the two tight end set, it makes it even easier to flip it and run it. Next up, I'm going to pick the Motion PA Power O. We're going to start off with cover two. We'll go to nickel package. We'll start off with Tampa two. It's going to be best to put the B route on a streak and motion him back to the other side of the line of scrimmage. This is pretty much the only adjustment you have to make. Everything else can play out as is. Uh, and you'll see that the X route here can really get open over the middle. Though he did run into the streaking tight end, which was kind of, you know, that's a little bit of an issue. You could always put the B on a pass block put the Y route on a streak and motion him out or put the fullback out. It really doesn't matter because these routes might do a better job of not running into uh, each other based on the fact that they're not as close. But that's something that you'll really can figure out um, as you're running the play. So I'm going to pick that again. We'll pick cover two man this time. Same setup for the A route. That's a very good route. As you can see right here, I'm not sure who is supposed to be in coverage. I think it's a cornerback, I would imagine. Next up, we'll pick cover three. So against cover three, you'll notice that the exact same setup will have success here because, like I said, that's pretty much just how this play works. So put the RB route on a streak, block the running back, block the tight end, put the B route on a streak, and then motion him out and put him on a comeback. This is going to be a one-play touchdown against cover three. It's best if you run it from the hash mark to the short side of the field. Doing this will allow for the receiver to get across the field a little bit quicker. So we'll go ahead and we'll do this setup one more time. You can cancel the play action or you can let it run. It really doesn't matter. But you can see how we can get this across the cover through formation a lot easier. And if I really would have waited a second or two, I probably would have had easy one play touchdown there. So let's go and let's go to the replay real quick. You can see that this comeback route holds down the cover three cornerback's attention, allowing the receiver to get open over the top of them. So you can really run this from anywhere on the field, but I find short, short side of the field works best because it gets open over the top quicker. Next up, we have the quick pitch. It's a good run play. Sometimes I'd like to motion this guy out just to pull the defender out a little bit, uh, spread the defense out a little bit. That's really the only option that you would really need to use. Um, this is not one of my favorite run plays. I might not have a ton of success running this, but it's a pro favorite run play uh, because a lot of people like to run these bunch sets. I don't really run a ton of bunch sets personally, um, but you can see it's one of the better outside runs you can have from this formation. Next up, we have the Seattle. Typically, I'm just going to put the X route on a drag and motion out the B route. This is going to be the best play. Against cover two man, you can put the RB route on a streak. I'm sorry, against cover two, not cover two man. Against cover two zone, that will give you a much better option when it comes to throwing to this B route over the top because essentially the streak is going to pull the safety in and the, and the drag will pull the, or pull the cornerback down eventually. I mean, you could really do a couple different things here. If I wanted to work that route a little bit quicker, I could do the exact same setup and just basically put the RB route on like an out route. I could do something like this to give myself a much quicker result when it comes to pulling that cornerback down because I felt like I was waiting a little while. And if I do that, you can see I get a very easy one play touchdown as I get a big catch and run. But I find the first setup probably gives you the most options. Against cover to man coverage, we'll do that again. 
pretty much going to be the same thing, only this time you don't really have to do anything. You just put one of these guys on a streak. I mean, the RB route here, I can put like a drag or something like that. This here is going to be a much better check down, and then you'll see how this cornerback here, the receiver really just runs around him. It's a pressing formation, but based off the fact that he takes such a wide looping angle, I'll go to the replay whenever it comes up rather i'll go to the replay to show you guys that it essentially just doesn't get pressed so here we go one more time like i said he tries to put hands on him but he just runs around him and that's what you're going to get pretty much every single time as he beats him to the corner except we have the z spot okay ready it's another play that really works against just about anything you just have to put the b route on a streak and all i'm really going to do is read the a route to the rb route um, I can really put this other guy here on like a slant or something like that, whatever type of check down I want. But if the RB route's open, I'll take it right away. I mean, that's a man coverage, but he's leading out. I'll take that, get a nice catch and run. No questions asked. That should be just about any man or zone, depending on the alignment pre-snap. It's really more of a zone beating uh, concept. As you can see right here, that looked like a man. He actually got out in front of it. Didn't quite get, uh, you know, that, that's not typically what I want to throw it against. I don't typically want to throw it against man. Only if I get the head start will I want to do that. Now a lot of times can happen if they're like running into people. Like here we get that that once again. Looks like it might have been a hard flat because he did react pretty quickly. But like I said, I'm starting by looking at that guy. Typically this concept works best against cover two zone though because the A route shoots right for that uh, spacing. So you can see right there, very easy play. You can easily get a one play touchdown if you have a fast enough tight end like a Darren Waller or something like that. For the single back bunch, we have the Z option. And then on the defensive side, we're going to go with cover zero once again. When it comes to this play, a lot of bunch and tight formations can really give uh, man coverage problems. So all we're going to do here is put the A route on a curl, which is down on the right, down the left stick or down the right stick. I'm not even really sure. Yeah, it's down the left stick. And you'll see how this B option route here can really get open for some glitchy gains. I mean, it's just the fact that he runs around the curl route that really makes that route get wide open. go to the replay here and you can see it's the it's the curl route that really sets the pick and he's just totally out of position i mean 21 for whatever reason just doesn't know how to get around that and we get a very easy one play touchdown and a very quick throw so we'll do that one more time and you can see how you know it doesn't even really matter where the defender is he just doesn't get around that curl uh, if you don't put that route on a curl it doesn't have the same effect I'll go ahead and I'll show you how this route runs without that curl there. And you can see he's pretty much locked up. So it really has more to do with the curl route than it does the actual route itself. Next up, we have the close PA cross. Start off with Tampa 2 as we always do. This play is a natural one play touchdown against cover two. You just have to buy a little bit of time and wait for the X route here to get uh, you know inside the free safety because the strong safety drops. Since there's no real route pulling back the strong safety, you can see how he will lag behind and the, this receiver just basically just streaks right past him. So he's had the bullet and pass lead inside away from the free safety. Next up, we'll do cover two man. This play needs no setup against cover two man either, but the receiver can take a little bit longer based off of the fact that the, um, the, uh, the cornerback is pressing, is jamming. So it might take him a second to get off that jam, but you can see it's the exact same reaction to the safety's deep. Next up, we have cover three. So we're just going to block our drag tight end, unless you want that check down, because it'll probably come more in handy. This is a very tough cover three one play bomb, but you can bomb up cover three if you have enough time. So I'm going to put the B round to come back, put the Y round streak, and block my two tight ends. I'll also slide my protection. I'm also going to go as far as double teaming JJ Watt, because he'll probably be the, the reason that this play doesn't work if it doesn't work. Like I said, rolling out is going to be best. And then you can see you can get a one play touchdown against this against cover three. But at the end of the day, like I said, you really need a mobile quarterback or a very good pass protection to get it done. Next up, we'll do cover one hole. So I'm going to put the A route on a streak and the crossing tight end and running back are typically going to be the best throws here. Um, that's pretty much going to be your best bet. You, you can try for the crossing route, but you probably won't have enough time. If you do have enough time, though, the X route will eventually get open with the streaking tight end. It's just an issue to, to buy this much time in the pocket. So if you have you know good blocking or a mobile quarterback and you make it happen, that route will get open. Next up, we'll do cut for quarters. Against cover four quarters, you're going to need a bigger speed advantage. You're also going to need more room on the field because I think that one of the best ways to beat this is by lob passing it. So that's going to be your best bet. But it does get behind the cover four free safety if you have a little bit of a speed advantage. Next up, we'll do cover four drop. 
Once again, this is a no adjustments, one play touchdown. You just have to wait for the X route um, to get inside the safety there. You can see he gets over the top of the strong safety, and then you just have to make a bullet pass lead away. And it's a very easy one play touchdown against cover four as well. Next up, we have the close PA sale. We're going to go, we're going to start off with cover two first. We'll go and we'll go to the nickel package for that. Tampa two. It's a very easy cover two bomb. You just have to put the X route here on a 10 yard out route. That's a five yard out route. Then you smart route it. Put the RB route on a streak. The A route you can just block. I don't really need him doing that. You can block the running back too, but that's probably your best option for a check down. Then the B route here will get right up the center between the two safeties. Once he gets inside the safe, the strong safety, you basically just bullet and pass lead up. Or you can lob it. It really doesn't matter. But it's a very easy one play touchdown against cover two. Next up, we'll do cover two man. Same setup. The uh, the B route here is inside the cover two cornerback, so he can't really get that relief, that press that he wants. And then it'll just basically just be going right up the middle once again. So just make sure you have your fastest guy here. Very easy. We'll play touchdown against cover two man as well. Next up, we'll pick cover three. This setup's going to be pretty similar. you got to put the A route on a streak and then the X route on a comeback route. The running back you can block, but this is going to be the look. So the B route here, once again, is going to get across the safety. As you can see right there, I just, you know, need a little bit of time. I don't get the best throw. But, you know, you can't run this the exact same way. You can't put the RB route on a streak because the safety won't be occupied you need the cornerback to be occupied so that you can occupy the safety with the streak so this is the only real setup we'll do that again uh the b route here like i said just have to kind of wait for him to get inside of that safety bullet pass lead away and i guess i'm just not throwing the ball very good but you can see he's passing it you can also see that the cornerback is nowhere near to be found on the on the X route. He's going to bite on that on that comeback route. So let's go and do this one more time. I'm trying to get a completion, and I'm not getting it. Oh, we did get it there. Boom. So you can see it's an easy one play touchdown against cover three. Next up, we'll pick cover one hole. Against cover one man, you can put the X route on a slant. You can put the A route on a streak to pull back coverage. Uh, it's really up to you if you want that RB route, which is a decent check down depending on um, you know who you have running it. Like here, I mean, I don't really have a, a good receiving tight end. But if you don't want to lose that, you can always put the A route on the streak. Next up, we'll pick cover four quarters. The setup for cover four quarters is going to be the same with the exception of you don't streak the RB route. You want to leave the RB route doing what he's doing. It's going to give you just a little bit of an inside lead, uh, and then you can make a big play. There, I threw the ball a little bit early. Go ahead and do that again. I'll block my tight end, and I'll slide my pass, but I give my tight end a little bit of help. Uh, but you can see, I mean, this guy here can get past uh, the, re, uh, the cornerback there, or the safety, rather, whose coverage. Um, is not going to be good enough. Once again, we need a pretty fast receiver to get this done or a very good route running advantage. Next up, we will pick cover four. We'll have to go to the dime package for that. Go cover four drop. Now, this can be a one play touchdown against cover four, but unless you have a really fast receiver, a huge speed advantage, it's not necessarily going to work. Uh, pretty similar setup to the cover three. Streak the RB route, put the X route on a comeback. Then you want to put the, uh, the Y route on a curl. I'm sorry, not a curl, a wheel route. That's going to occupy that safety. And then, like I said, if you have a fast enough receiver, you can get inside of the, the strong safety and over the top of the free safety because the free safety bites on the wheel route. Next up, we got the inside zone. It's another good run play, but since your opponent will typically be shifting or paying more attention to the two tight end side, you can really just hit him to the other side with this play, and you can see how it's going to be a good inside run, a good counter. You can really treat this like a weak side stretch, although if you have a safety coming down the box like that, you could always flip it and go the opposite direction and still have a lot of success with it there. I didn't quite get through that hole. There was definitely a hole there. I could have got a bigger run. It is what it is. At the end of the day, you could always motion across one of these tight ends and stuff like that, or you could just flip the play entirely and just try to take it wide. You can see the two tight end sides going to give you a lot of extra blocking and that was my most successful run next up we have the jet six drive most of the passing plays in this offense are crossing the field so it's good to have a, a, a you know change of pace to throw to the other side just put your b route on a streak and this is pretty much going to be the read the a route's a good check down but the rb route should get open outside of most things as you can see right here i'm gonna have the bullet throw it up the field a little bit there most of these routes are crossing routes, like most of the passing plays in this formation go across the field. So it's nice to have a play where you can basically go outside the numbers. And that's what this play is going to be right here. The RB route here is going to get open against just about any man or zone because I'm going to streak this tight end to basically pull any coverage off of them. If I have a good running or good uh, route runner or fast tight end running this, it'll beat man as well. Um, I'm not really sure how well it'll work with Richard Rodgers, but you can see even there, he was open. So we have a route that should get open against just about any defense going in a completely different direction than typically I will be on this formation. Next up, we have the PA sprint halfback flat. 
This is similar to the previous play I showed in a different formation where I'm going to want to motion this guy in so he gets across the line quicker. And then I want to put either the RB route or the B route on a streak. It really doesn't matter which one, but I think the B route is probably best. Your man beater is going to be the X route. He'll cross the field faster now because I motioned him in. And then your zone beater is going to be the Y route and the A route. But it's really going to be three levels of passing, which is going to be really what makes this so good. You can see here that looks like a zone coverage. Tight end gets outside of it. The running back in the flats also a very good option, although there I just took the deeper one. Here we have another, you know, all our man blitz. I might not really go this route against a man blitz, but I know already that it's pretty much just going to be the A route here, which is another good man beater once again, or the crossing receiver, which is really going to be your best two options against man. The tight end should really be the RB route tight end should really get open against just about anything. It's not the RB route tight end, I'm sorry. It's the uh, the A route tight end should get open against just about anything, just as long as you throw it on timing. Like there, that was a crossbody throw. Didn't really do the best job. But it's still going to be one of the best routes. I also didn't, you know, motion in my uh, my check down, which is really going to be important. Next up, we have the PA X burst cross. This play here is an easy setup. I'm just going to put the B route on a drag. That's all I really got to do. And my crossers are going to be the play. If it's a man coverage, you'll see how the running back really doesn't get open. But the, the two crossing tight ends typically beat man coverage. The running back's really only going to beat zone. You can always put the B route on like an in route too if you find that they're colliding or getting too close together. But when you throw it to the running back, a lot of times that tight end crossing will turn into a blocker. So that's one of the reasons you want that there. So really easy read. You have your, your B and your A route should be just about anything, man or zone. Uh, like right here, we're just basically playing a levels game as the deep route gets forgotten in the crossers. It looks like it might have been a cover two. And you can see we're just basically working our way from front to back. Really easy read, though. If it's zone coverage, it's going to be the running back. If it's man coverage, it can only be the tight end or, the, or one of the two tight ends. Next up, we got the tight end attack. This is a very popular play. It was a meta play uh, in Madden 22. So I'm including it here, even though I never really used that play much there, and I'm not really going to use it too much in Madden 23. Uh, it's a very good play, though. The running back is one of the better options. Um, I don't know why he decided to run the route in the direction that he did. I mean, you can always put him on an out route in the other direction. I find that that's uh, a little bit more effective. But the A route crossing tight end I know is a very good play. Um, there's definitely a lot of throwing angles to the three tight ends on the side. Um, that you can always take advantage of, like right here. You can see that uh, the tight end just slips right behind the zone, and you can have a lot of success there. And that, a large portion of that is because of this tight end pulling the routes. You can motion him out, too, to basically create more space for that. Here it looks like we have an all-out man blitz, um, which I typically wouldn't recommend running that, too. But the A route here is a very good route, even though, you know, that whole play, I probably wouldn't run that against man blitz at all, to be honest with you, because you can see there's just so much going on there. But you can motion out this B route here, have a lot of success with that, and then you can see how that A route really clears the crossing route for the tight end even though I have a, probably my worst tight end running the second most important route next up we have the four verticals I'm gonna go we're gonna pick cover three sky I'm gonna put the B route in a fade put the X route in a comeback and then we're gonna motion out this tight end that's all we really have to do and the B route here is gonna be a very easy one play touchdown just as long as he doesn't get too wide to where the cornerback is as you can see right here all we have to do is bullet pass lead maybe free form a little bit away from the safety it's a very easy one play touchdown against cover three can also have success against cover two. We're going to pick Tampa two. This play is a natural cover two play, but you can make it better by motioning this guy out and just keeping it consistent. The uh, the wheel route on the tight end side will get open, but you typically don't have the same athlete that you have on the other side of the field with the receiver. So you really can go to either side. If you want to throw to a guy that can score, though, the X route is a much better option as you can see we can bullet pass lead to the boundary and we can get a very easy one play touchdown because the option route really does pull the safety in quite a bit. Next up we have next up we have the PAY cross flood. Start off with Tampa 2. Against cover 2, just put the RB route tight end on a 10-yard out route. You can motion them out to create more separation, but if you don't want a giveaway or a tell, you can just run it as is. You can see how this receiver splits the safeties for an easy one play touchdown. Next up we'll do cover two man. Just put the RB route on a 10-yard out route. And the B route, if he gets past the jam, can beat cover two. But if he doesn't, the A route's going to get open every single time. Next up, we have the zone alert bubble. We'll go random on defense. Against cover two man and zone, the zone play, the zone runs can be best. But against cover three and cover four, the wheel or the bubble screen will be best. But you really just have to watch the cornerback. Like right there, he goes after the receiver, meaning it's a man coverage. So I have to hand it off. 
But you definitely want to watch the uh, the cornerback, like right here. He comes in. We could throw it out. It might have been a man coverage. It might have been a man blitz with the cornerback. But that's really the easiest way to read this play is just watch that cornerback in front, as you can see right there. Like I said, the result of the run play doesn't really matter. It would be a pick six if I make it a poor read and throw it to the wheel route or the, uh, the bubble screen on a play like that, which isn't, you know, obviously it's better to take a, a handoff for a loss than forcing it out. They say we're getting a lot of looks where the where they're actually following that receiver, so I have to hand it off every single time. Next up, let's think about wing stack. We have the flanker spot. Start off with Tampa two. This play can have success against Tampa two by streaking the B route. I'm also gonna put the A route on a drag. You can block your uh, running back, or you can just block the A route. It really doesn't matter because one, either the, the the swing route's probably better to keep on the field to be honest. But either way, the B route here can get over the top as long as you bullet and pass lead up it's not the biggest window so it's something that i could understand that some people might struggle with but you can easily win with that route this plays much better against cover three sky against cover three sky i'm just going to put everybody on streaks and motion out the rb route and this will basically once the the x route here gets to a certain point you see the cornerback just bails and if i get a good catch and run i can actually have a very easy one play touchdown there but i didn't really get the timing that i want so i'll do that one more time like i said this is something that once that cornerback bails i can throw it right away there I actually got hit but you can see it gets open right at the seam it's very possible to get a one play touchdown if you have a quick enough pass a fast enough receiver Against man coverage, I find it's best just to put the A route on a drag. The B route should typically get outside of man coverage pretty quickly, just as long as you bullet and pass lead away. Next up, we have the halfback zone weak. This is just one of your better inside runs. You can't flip it and run it to tight end side if you see a hole in that side, but ultimately it's going to be best to just run it uh, in the direction that it's it's basically going. You can even out the formation, and if you're running it against man coverage or zone coverage, typically by motion across one of the tight ends, you'll just get a blocking advantage. Nobody will follow, and then you can see how you can have a lane right up the middle. This defense is especially good against man cover too, or this play rather, um, as a lot of times you'll just basically get a delayed reaction. You'll, the, the, the man defender doesn't come across. When you motion across with the receiver, the man defender stays home, which immediately gives you an advantage. Typically this tight end can do a pretty good job of sealing this block as well. And you just have a very good run up the sideline against what typically what can be your fastest player like I'm using here with Watkins. Next up we got some updates for the PA fork. We do the whole thing. Cover two. Guess against cover two, you don't really need any adjustments, but you can make some adjustments to make this a little bit easier. As you can see, there really isn't too much there. But if you want to put the RB route on a 10 yard out route, that will help to create more separation. As you can see now, I mean, we just have nothing but space right up the middle there. It's also best to streak the, uh, the B route. Or is it the B route? I'm not sure if it's the B route. Yeah, the B route. Or the fader, rather. It's better to fade the B route. And then, like I said, put that tight end on that out route once again. And like I said, there's nothing but space here. I mean, that's just as wide open as you're going to get. Although, I didn't get a very good catch and run animation. I still probably quite a touchdown. But cover two is very easy. Works against cover two man the same way. Exact same setup for cover two man. As you can see, the X route is just gone. Um, once again, not getting the best catch and run, but still, same exact same thing. And it's cover three, you just have to motion this guy out, put him on a comeback route. That's going to be the best way to do this. And then we're just going to wait for this X route to cross. And you can see a huge amount of separation. Probably the same as the original, to be honest. Next up, we'll do cover. We'll do cover one. Pretty much going to be the same setup, although you don't have to do anything with the tight ends. You can see how the the X route here crosses. Although I didn't get a 
didn't get a ton of time. Probably should have blocked the check and release. Probably would have got more out of that. But you see, it still beats cover one man the same way. Next up, we'll do cover zero. See here, I get the most separation yet as they're just, you know, they're just getting each other's way. It's just, a, it's just an easy concept. Some of these have a lot of stack formations. It says as, as the, uh, you know, as they, as the receivers and the and the cornerbacks get each other's way, they just bump each other off and they just create separation for the streak. And this pretty much happens every single time you have overlapping routes like you have here with the B route. Although there we didn't quite get that animation. Like I said, sometimes you'll get it better than others, but you can still see we've got enough separation for the for the pass. It's just um, sometimes it's much more pronounced. Like there, as he was wide open again. Although I got sacked once again. You should I could easily be blocking the tight end, but you know not necessary. And the X route's gone too, so it really doesn't matter. Next up, we'll choose cover four. I think it's the only defense we didn't do. So I'll just put these guys in curls. Curls are for the girls. And we got another one play touchdown. So all I gotta do is curl the tight ends. Very easy play. And then once again, I forgot to say fade the, fade the B route one more time. And that X route is gone the second he gets inside the safety. Just bullet and pass it up. <clears throat> Next up, we'll do regular cover four if I can find it. So I'm gonna motion out Goddard again, put him on a curl or a comeback route, put the A route on a curl, put the B route on a fade. Pretty much going to be the play here. And then that X route here will get over the top of that safety. Although that was pretty close. I mean, it's cover four, splitting right up the middle. It's going to be a tight window. Make sure you have your fastest guy there. But another one play touchdown against cover four regular as well. Next up, we have the smash. Start off with cover two. Pretty good cover two play just like it is. Just put the X route on a streak, and that's all you really have to do. The B route here will get open over the top of the cover two cornerback outside of the safety. Uh, it'd be a very easy play because they're going to react to the, the streak. The streak is really pulling everything back, and the drag is going to hold that cornerback down. Gets cover two man. Do the exact same setup. The drag and the crosser will still work, but this outside route here is going to work the same as well. Pretty much everything will get open against just about every defense. Against cover three, we'll go and pick that again. Cover three is going to work very differently. I'm going to put the RB route, the A route, and the X route all on streaks. And this is going to be the play right here. The X route here will eventually get uh, forgotten, as you can see right here. I mean, he really just, the cornerback just takes off after the corner out there. I don't know if I'll get a one-play touchdown. I feel it's best to probably put the X route on a fade so that he's a little bit further from that cornerback. As you can see here, once that cornerback leaves, you can just bullet pass it outside. And I'm just not getting the catch-and-run animation I want, but you can see that it's there. Next up against cover four. Go ahead and pick up for a drop. You see that this route can get open outside of it. Next up against cover four match quarters. Ready, 
I find against cover four match, it's best to just do the exact same setup and motion the B-Route out. I don't think cover four quarters really do a great job in man coverage by themselves. And you can see you could easily have some success doing it like that. That really would work against a lot of different zone coverages. Against cover four regular, it's going to be the same setup. You're going to motion him out. Get him in that one-on-one -on -one with that cover four outside cornerback. And then basically just throw in the break. As you can see, you can really just muscle that in there. Uh, maybe better to wait a little bit. Go ahead and I'll do that again. Just give it a little more of a second. I mean, the check downs are always going to be there with the crossing tight ends. But you can see, I mean, this is something that if I throw that on timing, the cornerback can't react quick enough and you can basically beat him outside. Next up, we have the 26 duo. This looks like it's an inside run, but in reality, it's an outside run. It's kind of something where you can really do either or. Like here, I could take it inside or I could bounce it to the outside like a stretch. So it's really a two read play. Typically, you just want to run it away from any extra defenders in the box, any box safeties. But you'll see you pretty much always have that hole and you always have the option to take it outside wide. Next up out of the single back wing tight, we have the Stretch Alert X Lookie. If it's a man coverage, it's best to throw it because it'll typically beat the one-on-one. -on -one. Even if it's a zone coverage like there, it's kind of playing off. It'll have success. But if it's a zone coverage, you're going to want to typically hand it off and run outside. You can see here, you're going to have a lot of success. There, I didn't even take it all the way to the edge. I took it up inside a little bit. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.